Welcome back to Harbour Double O, number three in the Actions for Rockrail videos. Please remember that the, the Rockrail Wiki is the only official documentation and all other is user to user. So on today's video we'll be switching on the lights in the little office block here using the Rockrail clock and we'll also be opening and closing the door here using the functions of the locomotive entering the engine shed and once it's in the engine shed I'll be closing the door. So over to the PC and we'll show you how we program these things in. So in the PC I've got two accessories set up uh, for doing the lights in the office. It's just an accessory decoder give them an address. So I'm going to use the clock to switch these lights on and off. I will be switching the clocks. I will be switching the lights on and off at around about five seconds and six seconds. So normally the Rockwell clock wouldn't recognise the small, it's a small time. So we need to go up and change it. So you go to File, go to Rockwell Properties, and Automatic. Across here it says Action Timer 60 seconds. Untick the box, click on OK. Now you need to restart the rock rail. So I'll close it down. So now rock rail is restarted. If we go up to File, go to Rock Rail Properties, Automatic, and in here we can see the action timer 60 seconds has been unticked. Basically, if in under a minute that box is not ticked, it will take a minute to happen, so that's why we do it. I don't see any reason why you'd want to switch on your lights, sounds, every 30 seconds or so on, so I wouldn't recommend it. This is just for purposes of filming, folks. So I've got the two set up for the accessory decoder for lights. So I've got my tables now, go to Actions. And I'll click a new one, we'll call it Office. And we'll give the description Light 1. Why? We'll click on New. We can't give it the same name, we need to get a different name, so we'll call it Office. One, I think we'll call it two. And then the description will call it light two. Why? So if it's one there, we'll go to the definition. It is an output as it's an accessory decoder. In the ID, light one is going to be CO1. That's just how I set it up. My layout, my accessory decoder was called CO1. The sub ID will leave blank and in the command, rather than switch it on and off, we're going to flip it. So in other words, if it's on and it gets flipped, I'll go to off and vice versa. The parameter field will leave blank. We'll use it and we'll do it in every and we need to activate it as well. So we're going to put this light on every five seconds. Now as soon as I press apply, we'll start going on and off every five seconds, as you can see. So we'll go back to the index, we'll go to obviously two, definition, it's an output once again. The ID for this light is CO6, it's just the way it turned out in my layout. The command, once again, we'll go to flip. Parameter will leave blank, duration time will leave blank, use, every, activate, and this time we'll call it 6 seconds. And once again, as soon as I click apply, we'll start switching that light on and off every 6 seconds. So we'll do it across to the layout and you'll show you a little video of the, the lights going on and off. Now there's my camera. 
and the LEDs are in sequence with each other, you get a flicker. The flicker is not in real life, it's just uh, as I use a pulse wave modification to keep the lights dim all the touch. And the green you see in the background is just the exit signs on the layout. As I said before, I wouldn't recommend switching the lights on and off every four or five seconds. And to be more realistic, you maybe want to make it a certain time of the day or so on. So, back to the computer and we'll show you. So now we're going to start uh, making the door open for the one to go into the engine shed and closing once it goes into the shed. This is the sensor here, it's a accessory decoder, a DCC Next, and the door is opened using a rack and pinion device, which I made myself. So, I need to set up the actions for the door to open and the door to close. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the actions Alt, Free, we'll do a new, we'll call it Open Door. The description will leave blank for now, you can put something in there if you want. And apply it, and we'll also put in another new one. We'll call that door closed or door close. Apply in the definitions, the way you set up these uh, doors open, and door close. The door open first definition. The ID for it is CO5, that's accessory decoder, which is set up for it. The command to open the door is going to be on. I'm going to leave everyone else blank at the moment. Apply. The definition. ID is going to be CO5 again. And this time the command is going to be off. Apply. This again, I'll leave everyone blank for the moment. So now we need to set up some actions. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to use a sensor to open the door and a route to close the door. So this sensor here shall open the door. And into the actions. The ID state shall be door open, open door. And the state is going to be on. Substate we've left blank and everything else at the moment can leave blank as well. We'll add that in and OK. Now for the route, boot tables and go down to routes. And it is from block 3 to block 4. So block 3 to block 4 and the general actions. We'll add in the door closed, the substate, the state should be go. And everyone else will leave blank apart from the timer. I'm going to put a little delay in this one here because I want the train to go into the engine shed before it closes. And we'll try 7000 to start off with. So add that. Now we'll go over to the, the layout and we'll see the train entering the door opening and then into the shed and the door should close. Engine down to block 3, triggers the sensor, door opens and then we'll take it into the engine shed and after the time the event the door will close. Well, that's the last video for actions for me at the moment. If you'd like to see anything else with Rock Rail or anything else at all, put a little comment down below. And if you like, put your thumbs up, give me a like, it helps my channel out. And also, if you want to subscribe, it is free of charge. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.